So today's video is geared towards people that are going to be in the market to purchase a bicycle in the near future and want to get some general information on different types of bicycles and to develop a little bit of a vocabulary so that way when you go into a bike shop you'll be able to communicate a little more efficiently uh, with the salespeople. Now one caveat about today's video is the bikes that we're going to be looking at today are bike store bikes, not Walmart bikes, or at the very least um, bikes that you would get in a sporting goods store like REI or Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, we're not talking about Walmart, we're not talking about Target because those bikes, though they may look like mountain bikes or road bikes, are generally not of the same quality and you probably will end up being very disappointed in them. So uh, for today's video, we're going to stick with bicycles that are of an intermediate to a higher uh, grade. So, with all that out of the way, let's talk about different styles of bikes that are out there and what their purposes are. And let's start off with mountain bikes, because in my opinion, these are probably going to be the most versatile of all the bikes that are out there. You can ride them in just about any kind of terrain, any kind of weather condition, you can ride them in the dirt, you can ride them on pavement. Um, they're much more rugged, so if you're a little bit overweight, it's going to be able to handle the extra stress on it. You could literally ride these off the side of a mountain and it will be able to uh, take whatever you throw at it. So let's start off with the non-suspension mountain bikes. This is the Trek Mountain Track 820. I would also recommend the Specialized Rock Hopper or the Hard Rock. Um, extremely good basic entry-level mountain bikes that are not going to let you down. No suspension, so there's no shock absorbers on it, um, which gives you some advantages because there's less weight. You don't have all that extra springs and pneumatic crap in there, and there's less to go wrong with it, so there is a great advantage to that. These bikes have a chrome molly steel frame rather than an alloy, uh, aluminum alloy frame, so I know a lot of people associate uh, steel frames with being heavier weight, but the honest truth is with metallurgy, with modern metals, um, chrome molly steel is, has such a higher tensile strength that you don't need as much metal. So the tubes can be a little bit thinner walled, so in the end, even though this is a steel frame, this can be as light or in some cases lighter than an aluminum alloy frame. What's great about a mountain bike, what makes a mountain bike so versatile is the big fat knobby tires that are on it. Um, these run around 40 PSI, so they're very low pressure. That's what gives you all of your grip because there's just more rubber meeting the road. You have a much more aggressive tread, so you're not going to lose traction with tires like this. The downside, because they are fatter tires with more resistance, you're going to have to work a little bit harder than you would, say, with a bike with road tires on it with less tread. But if you want a bike that can handle just about anything, I would recommend you know, the mountain bike because this can do anything that you want it to do. Next up we're going to look at a bike that has some suspension on it. This is the Kona Cinder Cone. This is an aluminum alloy frame. You can tell an aluminum alloy frame by looking at the weld. You can see how this is a much fatter weld. When you look at a steel frame you can see it's a much thinner weld. So that's usually the first clue whether you're looking at an aluminum bike or a steel bike. You could also bring a magnet with you and just check the frames that way. Um, what's the advantages of aluminum? Well in some cases it can be a little bit lighter. It depends on the alloys that they're using. If we're dealing with uh, the department store Walmart bikes, those are usually made with very crappy alloys. The uh, name brand bikes you can pretty much count on using much stiffer alloys. Um, it's gonna have a little more flex to it. Aluminum is a softer metal than steel, so the bike is going to flex a little bit. So it'll give you a little bit of um, It'll, it'll absorb a little bit of the shock, where a steel frame has a much um, more rigid design. Some people like the steel frames because they flex less and all of the power that you put into the pedals is not being absorbed by the frame flexing, where when you have an aluminum alloy frame, it's going to tend to flex a little bit. Um, these have adjustable forks. You can always look at the forks and see if it has the adjustable dials on it. Some of them you can lock 
the, the front shock out so that it doesn't work at all and then you can turn it on and off. Um, it's a great feature because if you're riding on road and you don't need the suspension, if you turn the suspension off, you'll be able to put, once again, all of your power goes into the pedals and it's not being absorbed by the shock absorption system. This particular bike has disc brakes on it. And these are cable actuated disc brakes. Um, compared to the older V brakes, or this, in this case, we're looking at cantilever brakes, these are usually adequate for just about everybody. Um, these tend to lose grip when you're riding in mud and wet conditions where the disc brakes will tend to be uh, a little more dependable in those kind of conditions. One thing you could see with both of the bikes that we've looked at so far, they have adjustable uh, stems on them. So you can adjust the height of the handlebars to, to fit the, your riding style. This one also has the uh, little knuckle here where you can adjust the height of this. It's a nice feature compared to ones that do not have that kind of adjustment. Um, the one thing to be concerned about with aluminum, it is a softer metal. And if you smack into something with it, it's going to dent up real easily. So at the other end of the spectrum, we have the full suspension mountain bikes. This is the Gary Fisher Sugar 3 Plus. This is a full suspension mountain bike. This uses adjustable pneumatic shocks that you can put an air hose up to them. Usually these need a special high pressure pump to be able to adjust the amount of rebound in the shock. So you can, you can it's got a, a little nozzle on the end of it. You hook the pump up to it and you can change the amount of pressure in the shock to make it stiffer or softer depending on your conditions. Um, the fork has the adjustable amount of rebound on it and you can lock it out if you're riding on the road. Um, so if you want to have the frame not absorb as much of your energy, it won't do that. This one is using V-brakes, which up until recently has sort of been the gold standard until disc brakes have come out and, and been a more popular option. But um, once again, if you're riding mostly uh, you're, you're not riding like hardcore off-road, you're going to find that the, the V-brakes are, are more than adequate for what you're going to do with it. Um, the downsides of full suspension, more weight. Um, you have more components here, um, more things to go wrong. Um, and also, if you're going to be really bearing down on it, these shock absorbers are going to eat up a lot of your inertial energy, so there's not as much power going to the pedals. The upside, you could ride this thing on the roughest of terrains, and it, will, it won't be super comfortable, but it will be able to absorb a lot of the, the shock uh, and the vibration from it, so it'll be a fairly comfortable bike uh, for that kind of purpose. Uh, looking at the stem on this, this is not an adjustable stem on this particular bike, so you're kind of stuck with whatever angle the handlebars are at. So it's something to consider uh, when you go to take a test drive on the bike. Make sure that, you know, if the, the feel of the handlebars is not quite right, if you have a situation like this where you have the adjustable stem on it, you can tune it to what you want, where in a case of a bike like this, you will have to uh, trade out the stem for one that has the, the proper angle and uh, distance that you're looking for. So those are your basic options with mountain bikes are non-suspension, semi-suspension, and full suspension. So next up we're going to talk about the polar opposite of the spectrum, which is the pure road bike. So what's different between a mountain bike and a road bike? Well, these are designed for speed. They're designed to be as lightweight as possible and to get you from A to B in as quick a fashion as you possibly can. So they do not have the same kind of strength as a mountain bike. In fact, if you try to ride these things off road, you're gonna probably bend it up like a noodle. Most of these are gonna be made with lighter weight alloys. In case of these, this is a aluminum alloy. This is a carbon fiber. So they are designed to be as light as possible. And they're designed to be as efficient as possible where the tires, number one, almost no tread on that tire when you take a look at it. Number two, it's extremely narrow. And where the mountain bike tires ran at about 40 pounds per square inch, these are running at over 100 pounds per square inch. So they are super stiff so that there is almost no resistance from the rubber meeting the road. The downside is you can really only ride these on dry uh, pavement. You do not want to be trying to ride these things off road uh, for any reason whatsoever. If it starts raining, call a cab. You don't want to be riding one of these things. 
First up, we're going to talk about the Specialized Dolce. This is a good, I'd say it's an intermediate uh, road bike. It's got a lot of great features to it. Aluminum alloy frame, so fairly lightweight. We have the touring handlebars, which some people find to be not very comfortable to ride, but it puts you in a very aerodynamic riding position, um, which is really the whole point of a bike like this. You want to get the most efficiency out of it as possible. Although they do give you the dual action brakes so you can hold uh, the handlebars from either position and still be able to operate the brakes on it. All of the modern road bikes use the uh, brake levers that have the shifters built into it. So essentially you tilt the shifter to shift gears, you pull the, the uh, lever in order to brake. And then there's usually another button that allows you to upshift or downshift depending on uh, which way you want to go. The nice thing about this is that you can maintain a grip on the handlebars as you're riding and be able to operate both the shifters and the uh, brakes without having to change your position where back in the old days the shifters were down on the frame or up on the stem. You had to take a hand off of the handlebars in order to operate those features now you can keep your hands firmly on the handlebars and operate any of those things. Next up, we're going to talk about the Trek. This is a carbon fiber Trek. This is an OCLV Carbon 110 carbon fiber frame, extremely lightweight, extremely rigid. Once again, when you're dealing with aluminum alloy frames, you get some flexibility with the frame is going to absorb a certain amount of torque on it where the stiffer stuff like carbon fiber tends to mean that all of your power is going to go straight into the pedals. Um, a lot of people opt for the clip-on style pedals versus the uh, old-fashioned uh, regular platform pedals. With these you get special shoes that clip into uh, the pedals and allow you to also push as well as pull on the pedals as you're riding. Things to be concerned about with carbon fiber is if you score this or cut it in any uh, fashion, it's like glass and it will crack. So you have to be extremely cautious about how you treat this thing. You don't want to um, scratch it on anything because it's just like scoring a piece of glass and it will break. Um, we're dealing with the, once again, the dual action shifters where the levers are built into the uh, the brake levers, so these are your shifting levers up here. You can maintain grip on the handlebars and still operate all of your controls. And then over here we have the Servilo. This is a S1, I believe, Italian made, very cool aerodynamic design, aluminum alloy, dual action shifters, a lot of the same features as the other bikes. Um, so that's a good cross section of road bikes. Extremely lightweight, extremely high performance, extremely fast, but stay on the dry pavement and you'll do just fine with these. Now, stuck somewhere between a mountain bike and a road bike are the hybrid bikes, which some tilt more towards being a road bike and some tilt a little more as an off-road bike. And we've got three pretty good examples of these right here. Um, what makes a hybrid a hybrid? Well, it has pretty much some attributes of either the mountain bike or the road bike. The frames are definitely much more resilient than the pure road bike, so you can do a little bit of light off-roading with these. The tires are really gonna be the thing that makes the determination of how uh, much off-roading you can do depending on the amount of tread that you're dealing with it. Um, the hybrid tires are a, a half step between the mountain bike and the road bike where the mountain bike had 40 pounds per square inch, the road bike had over 100 pounds per square inch. These run somewhere between 60 to 80 pounds per square inch so it's, it's a it's a compromise between the road and the off-road. And once again, the amount of tread you have is going to make the determination of where exactly it's going to fall in that scale. You can see with the Trek here, it's got a, a little more of an advanced tread where when we look at the Specialized over here, it has very little tread. So this will be a little more of a road bike than an off-road bike. Um, you could do like uh, gravel roads, stuff like that, manicured paths, um, so long as you're not like trying to jump the bike or anything like that, as long as the tires are staying on the ground, um, you'll do pretty well with it. Uh, hybrids, for the most part, have upright riding kind of position, so you're not going to be in as aggressive uh, of a riding position as you will be on a road bike, so a lot of people will find these to be a lot more comfortable. 
than the uh, the pure road bikes. Uh, starting off with the Specialized, we got a Specialized Vita here. Um, pretty much a straightforward bike. There's no suspension on this. It's just a straight fork, straight frame, a little bit better um, strength to it than the road bike, so it'll handle a little more abuse. Um, the shifters on these are the trigger style shifters, so you have dual action here for shifting and your brake levers are on the same unit. So once again, like the road bike, you can keep uh, a grip on the bike and be able to shift without changing your grip on the handlebar, so a very safe way to ride. Um, V-brakes, which to me are super adequate for, for this kind of riding, although you'll, you'll probably find more and more of these kind of bikes coming out with the disc brakes just because it's becoming more of the, the fashion. Um, next up we have the Cannondale Silk Path 400 Hybrid um, with some suspension in it. This one actually has the shock absorber built into the front headset, so this will actually uh, act as a shock absorber on this. We've got the V-brakes, uh, which work just fine with this. Um, this has a different style of shifting where this has the grip shifters, which you can hold the grip and shift um, without having to change your grip on it and your brake levers are right there so you can grab them quite easily. Um, these work for some people and not for other people. Um, one issue that a lot of people have with these is as you're riding sometimes you may be really bearing down on the pedals and you'll be accidentally shifting gears because um, the gear shifters are built into the grip so you might have to uh, find yourself shifting your grip a little bit further out so that you don't end up shifting it. Um, some people find it to be not a problem, other people find it to be very annoying. I've had a number of customers that came in and claimed there was something wrong with the bike because it was uh, shifting gears on its own and it turns out it was just the way that they were riding, that they were bearing down and moving their wrists on the shifters and causing it to shift. Um, so if that's an issue with you, you may want to opt for the trigger style shifters uh, like the Specialized has here. This also has a shock absorber built into the seat post, so it almost has full suspension on it, depending on how you want to look at it. So you have both front and rear shocks on it, makes it a little more comfortable. Um, the gearing on these is a, a much wider range than you'd find with the road bikes, which are designed mostly for speed. With these, you'll notice a very large low gear on them, so uh, good for climbing hills and that sort of thing. And the tires on them are changeable, so if you wanted to make the bike a little more off-road capable, you can get more aggressive treads on them. Lastly, we have the Trek. This is a multi-track 7300 7, is the model on this. Aluminum alloy frame. We've got front shocks with the adjustable dampening on it. Doesn't have a full lockout, but you can crank up the dampening to the point where it doesn't flex much at all. A um, lot of the same features of the other two bikes, once again, going with the grip shift, so these uh, will change gears almost like a motorcycle throttle. So that's, that's your basic cross-section of hybrid bikes. So if, you're, if your riding style is going to tilt more towards uh, riding on trails and stuff like that and, and just general casual riding, you'll probably find the hybrids to be a good uh, compromise between the, the uh, other choices. Another kind of hybrid bike that's been gaining popularity is what we call a gravel bike. Now it has its general looks of being a road bike but it's a little more beefy so it can handle some light off-road riding. You'll notice the frame is a little bit beefier looking. Um, you've got more tread to the tires for like light off-road. They call it a gravel bike because that's about the, the worst kind of condition I would ride on would be gravel. Um, but with skinny tires like this I, I wouldn't be too uh, eager to go on any kind of uh, you know, off-road riding. Disc brakes on it, which is one of the things that makes a gravel bike a gravel bike. If you see a road bike with a little bit fatter tires, a little bit beefier frame, and disc brakes, um, that's pretty much the, the key signs that you're working with a gravel bike. Um, it has the touring style handlebars with the shifters and the brake levers all combined. Um, you're not going to find this to be a very comfortable riding position. It's, it comes close to competing with a road bike in overall performance, but you're going to find that it's, it's a little heavier. So your friends that are riding the uh, carbon fiber and titanium frame bikes might be uh, having a, a bit of an advantage over you. 
Another kind of hybrid bike that we see quite often are what we would classify as comfort bikes. They share a lot of the features of the hybrid bike, but more of an eye towards uh, the overall comfort of the rider. So they have much fatter tires, which give you better traction, but also because these are the 40 PSI tires, they're softer and it gives a more comfortable ride. In most cases, they have uh, dual shock absorbers. In this case, it has the shock in the seat post as well as in the fork. This particular one is a Diamondback um, aluminum alloy frame, fairly lightweight, very low frame height. So if you got a bad back and you can't swing your leg over the rear tire, the, they've uh, decided to make the frame much lower so it's much easier to get on and off the bike. Very upright riding position so you're not going to be hunched over in any way, shape or form. Um, this one has front and rear derailers on it with the grip shifter so you change gears once again by uh, turning the shifter like a motorcycle throttle. Another kind of comfort bike we have is the Land Rider Auto Shift. Um, this has a lot of the same features except you don't have to worry about operating gear shifters on it because it has a centrifugal clutch on it. So the faster that you pedal, the bike will actually shift itself. And as you slow down, you'll notice it will shift into the lower gears. So if you are uh, finding yourself confused by different shifters on the bike, um, this gives you the option of having the auto shift, which pretty much runs itself. Um, aluminum alloy frame, once again, dual shocks and uh, adjustable stem on the front so you can change. You can see in this case, this person wanted a much higher riding position, so the stem is in a, in a very high position. Very fat tires with not a, a huge amount of tread on it, so it's not going to be quite as noisy if you're riding with something like this that has a much more aggressive tread. This is going to be a little bit of a quieter uh, ride and a little bit of a smoother ride. Uh, 40 PSI tires, so nice and soft, lots of traction, and um, a little bit of shock absorption uh, as a result. And then something that's sort of a wild card, this is a torquer that we built. Um, the guy was a little bit older, didn't want to have to worry about um, having a lot of gears on it, so we put in uh, the old-fashioned planetary gear. Uh, I believe this is a three-speed. It may be a three or a five-speed. It's a three. It uses the um, grip shift style shifter. It only has the rear shifter, so it doesn't have a lot of stuff to throw you off um, if you want to have a very simple bike. And it has the coaster brake on it. So rather than having to operate gear levers, you just pedal to go, you pedal backwards, and it stops. So if you want a very simple ride, um, a, a three-speed with a coaster brake on it may be the way that you want to go with it. You're not going to win any races with it, but if you just want a very simple bike, um, this is something you may want to consider. Of course, one other possibility are the classic designs. First of all, we have the uh, pretty much the standard beach cruiser. This is made by 630. Uh, pretty much you're just your average, everyday, ordinary beach cruiser. It's got very wide handlebars, so you're going to be uh, in a very upright riding position. It's a single speed. There are no gears on this, so uh, very simple. It has a coaster brake. You pedal backwards and it stops. Um, it's called a beach cruiser because that's probably about the only environment that I would want to ride this is riding around near the beach because it's very flat, there's no hills, and you don't have to worry about needing gears in order to go up and down uh, any kind of incline. Um, very simple tires. The white walls are very popular with these because it's a throwback to the, to the 1950s when these kind of bikes came out with this sort of eyeball shaped uh, frame. Um, if you're in need of a bike for, uh, you know, where transport on level ground is the uh, thing you want to do, this will be just fine. If you got hills you need to climb, I would not recommend that. Then again, this is also a beach cruiser design. This is the uh, 5 o'clock somewhere Margaritaville Jimmy Buffett uh, beach cruiser. This does have a, uh, a five-speed rear derailleur. So this one actually does have some gears, so you will be able to climb some hills with it. Very fat tires with uh, pretty much road, kind of road treads on it, so not very aggressive treads, but if you get caught out in the rain, uh, you're not gonna be too terribly worried that you're gonna you know, not have enough traction to stop or to steer. Very comfortable seats on these, big fat wide seats give you uh, 
a lot of uh, surface area to plant your butt on. And on this one, they actually add a uh, beer uh, cap opener. So um, don't drink and drive though. And then we have sort of really the throwback to my grandparents' age, which I call these the British racer design. They're a very classic design. Most of them, this has some updates to it where it's using the V-brakes and it's using the grip shifters. So there are some modern upgrades to this. This is the Retrospec, Retrospec Beaumont um, full fenders. So if you ride through some puddles, you're not going to get all splashed. It is a five speed uh, with a regular sprocket on it, not a planetary gear system the, versus the old three speeds, which were more common with this design back, like say in my grandparents era, in the World War II kind of generation were more familiar with des this design of bikes. Um, not going to be great at anything, but it's good basic transportation. It does have gears. It can climb hills. A little on the heavier side, you're, you're dealing with a, uh, a steel, a welded steel frame. So uh, fairly uh, rugged design. Um, but, you know, once again, you're not going to win the triathlon riding on something like this. But if you just need basic transportation around town, this may be a good choice. Runs on... Uh, 70 PSI tires, so it's a good, it's very similar to the hybrids in the overall performance, although you only have uh, one set of gears here. You don't have the dual shifters on it, so your range of gears between high and low gear, uh, you don't have quite so many choices. The last classification of bikes we're going to look at are what I would call the special purpose bikes, where they're going to have a very narrow focus for what they're designed for or what you can use them for efficiently. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is what I call the fixie, or most people call the fixie, in that it has a fixed gear, which means even when you stop pedaling, it continues to pedal. There is no freewheel on the rear sprocket. Now you can get some of these with a reversible uh, wheel that'll have a fixie on one side and then a free wheel on the other so you can just flip the wheel around in order to get either or. This one is just set up with the fixed gear on it. Um, these for the most part are track bikes that are designed for Olympic style uh, oval track racing. Um, you'll find a lot of times they're carbon fiber or titanium super lightweight. Um, they're not the most efficient bike for using for transport because there are no, there's only one gear. And if you try to go up a hill on one of these, unless you're Lance Armstrong, you're going to be sucking wind something fierce. So um, a lot of me bike messengers in the city like these things. God knows why. I, I think they just like the, uh, it's got a the masculine kind of thing about it. A lot of them ride them with no brakes. They just use the fixed gear that they'll try to like put the weight back on the pedals in order to stop. This guy who owned this one last at least had the presence of mind to put a front brake uh, caliper on it. So at least you have some way of stopping. So once again, a very narrow kind of focus. Next one we're going to look at, this is a downhill bike. This is designed for riding on ski slopes in the summer on like a double black diamond ski slope. A lot of the uh, ski places will shut down in the summer and use their slopes as bike trails. So there are a lot of bikes that are designed pretty much for just going downhill. You put it up on the ski lift, you go up to the top of the mountain, and then you ride this back down. So one gear, very high gear high gear ratio, so very fast riding. This has a rear hydraulic disc brake, no front brakes on it, because I don't think you really want to have front brakes when you're going straight down a hill. If you try to lock up your front brakes, you're going to go flying, so you just want rear brakes on it. Um, really nice Fox forks on this, a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of give on that shock. It's got the lockout on it, but you'll probably always have that shock working. Um, you know, if you're living around the beach in a flat terrain area, you could probably get away with riding this thing, but it's really purposely designed for uh, riding downhill um, as fast as you can. And then the last one we're going to look at today are these wheelie bikes, or at least that's what they've kind of gotten a reputation for. SC Racing has come out with like the, the Big Ripper and another a, a number of different designs on it. So essentially, it's just a, a big, an adult sized BMX bike. So that's a good cross section of different kind of bikes that are out on the market. So hopefully you can use some of this information the next time you go into your local bike shop, if you're looking for something specific 
um, you'll know a little bit more about your choices. So if you have any more questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments or stop into the shop. You know, all of these bikes that we've shown today are uh, good examples of bikes that we have in stock that are for sale. They're all used bikes and you're, you're gonna buy them uh, at least half of the cost of what it was brand new. So if you wanna save yourself some serious money, um, this is a great way to do it. So until the next time, don't let the bastards get you down.